Much information is provided to us in the form of percentages. For example, you would hear something that said like 70% of the learners at the school pass matric or 10% of um, what you sell you'll earn in commission or we need to allocate 20% of the budget to providing housing. So being able to work out what those percentages mean in terms of actual money or number of learners is important. And that's what we're going to look at quickly today. So for example, if you're told that the math test was out of 40 and I got 60%, we want to know how many actual marks did I get? So in other words, what I know is that I got 60% of the 40 marks. I got 60% of the 40 marks. This is now a very easy calculation I can do using my knowledge of fractions because 60% we know is just 60 over 100. And if you remember back to what we did in fractions, it's of 40. And remember when we're doing that, we can just write it as 40 over 1. And so we're multiplying fractions. So we say multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Now at this point we can just go ahead and multiply out. But remember what we said when we were working with fractions. If we can simplify before multiplying out, it's going to make it a bit easier for us. So what we can do is divide the top by 10 and the bottom by 10, right? 60 divided 10 is 6, 100 divided 10 is 10. And there's still another 10 we can divide by, 40 divided 10 is 4, and here we've got at the bottom 10 divided 10, it's 1. So then we get 6 times 4, which is 24 at the top, and 1 times 1, which is 1 at the bottom, and 24 over 1 is just 24. So now I know that what I got was 24 marks out of 40 on the test, and that is 60%. Okay, I want you to try one for yourself. The question says 30% of the learners in a class play netball, and if there are 50 learners in the class, how many learners play netball? Pause the video now, work it out for yourself, and then we'll go over it together. All right, let's check. You should have said that what we're doing is saying we want to know what 30% of 50 is. Well, 30% as a fraction is just 30 over 100, and we want to work out what that is of 50, and we can write that as 50 over 1. We know how to multiply fractions. It's going to be 30 times 50 over 100 times 1. Again, we could go ahead and do the multiplying out, but if we can do some simplifying, it will certainly help us. And one of the things here we can simplify is we can say 50 goes into 50 once, and 50 goes into 100 twice, and 2 goes into 2 once, and into 30 15 times. So we would get 15 times 1, which is 15 over 1, which is 15. You might have done this cancelling a little differently, or you might have multiplied out and simplified the fraction, but whichever way you did it, you must have come to the answer of 15 at the end. It is often very useful to know what percentage we have. So, for example, if I know that 14 of the 15 learners in my class sing in the choir, it might be useful for me to know what percentage is that of my class. And this is quite easy to do. We can just say, look, there's 14 out of the 50 who are singing in the choir. And we want to know what that is as a percentage. And we've seen that it's easy to turn a fraction into a percentage because we just need to get it as a fraction over 100. And we can see easily that, you know, 50 times 2 is 100. So 14 times 2 gives me 28 over 100. And so I can answer the question. It's 28% of my class. So there's an easy way <coughs> when we can see it quite easy. 14 over 50 is the same as 28 over 100. But there are going to be many examples where we can't see what it is over 100 easily. Let me show you. All right. If I'm told that 21 of the 420 learners in the school um, sing in the choir, and I want to know what percentage that is, what I'm asking is, 
I know that 21 out of 420 are in the choir. So this is the fraction of learners that are in the choir. And I want to turn that into a percentage. Well, the way we've been doing that up until now is just to say we've got to make it as a fraction over 100. And then that'll be, enable me to easily get the answer as a percentage. However, it's not very simple to see what to do to 420 to turn it into 100. So we actually need a different method in this case. So let's get rid of this method and talk about our new method. Okay, the new method goes like this. We know that 21 over 420, that's the fraction of kids in the choir. And really what we want to know is that fraction of the total, which would be 100%. So to turn it into a percentage, we're going to say 21 over 420 of 100%, which we know then goes like this, 21 over 420, and we can say times 100 over 1%. Over Easy enough to multiply, we get 2100 over 420%. Now, this fraction here is obviously not really in its simplest form, so let's simplify it so we can give our answer nicely. So we can divide top and bottom of this fraction by 10 very easily. And we should notice that 21 goes into 42 twice, and 21 goes into the 210 10 times, and then we have 10 over 2, which is 5%. So 21 of the 420 learners in my school means 5% of the school. And just notice, this is where percentages become useful. If you remember, it was 28% of my class that sang in the choir and 5% of the school that sang in the choir. And this helps us be able to say, well, look, obviously my class likes singing a lot more than the school as a whole does. Okay, let's give you one to try now. Here is the question. In an area, 33 schools don't have electricity. There are 20, 220 schools in the area. What percentage of the schools in that area do not have electricity? Pause the video now, open your homework book, and try this example in your homework book. Okay, hopefully you did this. You said you need to calculate 33 over 220 of 100%. So we have to do this calculation. That gives you 3300 over 220%. And now we need to simplify that fraction. Divide by 10, divide by 10. This one can divide by 11 and you get 2. And this one by 11 gives you 30. And 30 over 2 gives you 15. So your answer was 15%. Let's look at an exam another example, but this time involving decimals. A road is 11.5 kilometers long. 2.3 kilometers of the road is tarred. What percentage of the road is tarred? 2.3 out of 11.5. That's the fraction of the road that is tarred. And we want to turn that into a percentage. So we want to know what fraction that is of 100%. This time, we're going to get our calculator out to do that calculation. And what we're going to do is we're going to say 2.3 divide 11.5 divided by 11.5 multiplied by 100. OK, let's see how to do it. We say 2.3 divided by 1, 1, 0.5, and then multiplied by 100. And we get our answer of 20, which we can then write in. OK, here's one for you to try. We get a donation of 8.5 kilograms of meat for winter school meals. We use 3.4 kilog kilograms of meat on the first day. What percentage of the do donated meat have we used? Now, don't be phased by that 8.5 kilograms. You should remember straight away that 8.5 is just the same as 8.5. All right, pause the video now and see if you can do this in your homework books, and then we'll go over it quickly together. 
You can use a calculator for this example. All right, so the way we would do this is we'd say we know that we've used 3.4 out of the total of 8.5, and we want to turn that into a percentage. You then go to your calculator, you enter 3.4 divided by 8.5 multiplied by 100, and when you press all the buttons, you should get out your answer of 40%.